All right, I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of how to use this 360 transitions pack for Adobe Premiere. So included in this project, there are six different transitions. I'm just playing them all through now. So you've got flip down where the camera flips down like that. You've got flip up, which is obviously the opposite, up into the sky. 360 anti-clockwise where the footage spins anti-clockwise like that. And then obviously the opposite, 360 clockwise. Spin left, so we're just sort of looking over the left shoulder, whoosh, like that. And then spin right, where we're looking around over the right shoulder. Uh, so those are the six different transitions that are included in this pack. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is download the GoPro FX Reframe plugin. So you can just Google that. Here's a link to it. And then you're gonna to wanna to download the most current edition. So either Mac or Windows, whatever you're using. And then that way you have inside of Premiere, you've got this effect. If you just go into your effects panel and type GoPro, scroll down, GoPro FX Reframe, you can drop that onto your 360 clips. And then we have the ability to reframe your 360 clips, uh, which is what this whole transition thing relies on. Anyway, I'm assuming you've probably already got this installed if you know what you're doing with 360 video editing. So let's just get on to using this in a real project. So right here, I've got myself a little uh, edit. It's just like a little 15 second edit that I've built from some shots from the Yacht Week. Um, so at the end, I've basically got two 360 clips, this one here of us jumping in, and then this one here of the boat sailing. Uh, and I wanna create a nice little flip rollover transition between these two 360 shots. And these two things were shot on the Insta360 ONE R. So when you import them into Premiere, if you've got the Insta360 plugin, they come in like this um, as these sort of equi-rectangular images, that's what it's technically called. If you're working with GoPro footage on the GoPro Max, um, what you need to do, I've got an example here. So you load it up in the GoPro player, the shot that you wanna work with, and then you need to come up to playback controls here and then projection and then click equi-rectangular. You can see now we've got the same sort of unfolded image. And then what you would wanna do is export uh, or make a little trim of the section that you wanna use for your edit. So this bit looks cool, click that click tick and then export trim, export that uh, as a ProRes file or whatever you wanna use and then throw that into Premiere and then you can treat it in exactly the same way. Currently, Premiere doesn't support the GoPro Max .360 files, um, so that's why you have to go and export them out of the GoPro player. But I'm sure at some point in the future they might start supporting the, the files natively, so you might be able to skip out that step and just drop the shots into the timeline. Anyway, let's get on with it and make one of these transitions. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the place where I've got the 360 Transitions project saved, and then I'm gonna literally drag and drop that into Premiere like this, and you get an import, import entire project, great. That's what we wanna do. Okay. And then we've got ourselves a little folder called 360 Transitions and one called Footage. Uh, the footage has just got the demo clips that I used for some of the examples in. But if we go into the 360 Transitions folder, let's use the flip up for this one. So I'm gonna open that up. So what happens is the guys jump in and then the camera flips up, does a full 360 up into the sky, whoosh like that and then comes down on the next shot. So I think that's gonna look pretty cool for the transition that I wanna create here. Now obviously what we need to do is we need to replace these demo clips um, with the clips that we want to use from our edit here. So all I need to do now is copy and paste them and then drop them into this flip up sequence. Uh, and then we need to position them so this red marker is in between the two clips and that's where the transition is gonna occur. It's probably a good idea as well to duplicate this comp. So go duplicate up here, rename it Yacht Transition. Because that way we've got the original, uh, we're not gonna destroy anything that we do. Okay, so I've got my two shots now. Um, straight away you can see some weird stuff going on. So we've got this kind of funny circle at the top and also uh, there's lots of black around the edges. Now, the reason there's black around the edges is because if I zoom all the way out, Basically, if you click onto the uh, transition layer here and, and go down into the GoPro FX Reframe plugin, you've got lots of different settings for what you want your finished shot to be. Um, so by default, I've got it on GoPro 16x9, 1920x1080. If you want your final thing to be 9x16, you can click that. If you want it to be 4K, uh, so 3840x2160, you can click that. And you can see over here, it adjusts. And the reason that I've created this thing so big is just because I wanted to make sure that you've got all the possible options and you can choose whatever size you want to go for. You know, for this one, uh, you could go for square, but we'll worry about the black around the edges later on. So don't worry about that for now. Uh, now this edit that I'm making, if I go back to the original one, it's four by five, so perfect for Instagram. So what we're gonna need to do on this transition layer is toggle this down to social four by five. So this is actually the size of our finished composition. 
We've also got this funny thing going on where we've got these sort of black rings around the top and the bottom. And the reason for this is just because if I zoom out and show you the whole composition and turn off the transition layer, the shot that we're working on doesn't fill the whole space. So what we need to do when we bring our shots in is we need to right click and then we need to go scale to frame size like that. And that way it's going to stretch it out and it's going to fill the whole frame. And then when we turn on the transition layer, we're not going to have that black thing at the top and the bottom. So it's really important that when you bring your shots into these transition sequences, one of the first things that you do is you're going to go right click and then you're going to go scale to frame size and you want the shot that you're using to fill the whole black box. If you're using a GoPro shot, let me just pull in a GoPro shot for you so you can see how that's going to work. So GoPro test. Now what you can do, if you drop that in, you'll see that it's slightly smaller than the frame. So let's just turn everything off. So what we would need to do with this GoPro shot again is right click and click scale to frame size. And the reason that I've made these sequences the size that they are is because they are the size of the Insta360 at its maximum resolution. Um, so any shots, if you're shooting in slow-mo, if you're shooting with a different camera, if you're shooting with a lower resolution, the first thing you need to do is you need to go right click and then scale it to the frame size so it fills the whole box. Cool, so let's delete this GoPro test turn back on our transition layer um, and now we've talked about the whole kind of why there's this black stuff around the edges so let's zoom in and now we can start working on the bit that we want to work with um, so I'm just going to zoom into 100% so play it through and straight away just like that we've got this nice transition with the flip up looks pretty cool huh now what we can do in this transition layer if you go into the effect controls you can play around with the zoom don't want to touch any of these pan tilt and rotate options but you can play around with the zoom if you decide to zoom out a little bit more I think this shot's going to look a bit better if I zoom out a bit. So there we go. A bit more of that tiny planet effect. Sploosh and transition. Looks awesome. Now the next thing we need to do is obviously make the sequence the right length. So I'm just going to drag the beginning of this transition layer here and then drag the end like that. And then select everything. Push everything to the beginning of the sequence. Uh, and now let's jump back into our demo sequence. Um, so now we can replace these two original 360 clips with the transition that we've created. So if I just drag in the yacht transition that we've made here, like that, put that on top there. And now we've got the transition in the edit the way that we want it. Uh, and although we had those black bits around the edge, because this main edit composition is a little bit smaller, it just trims off those black bits for you. So the footage fills the whole frame. Now there's something you need to look out for when you're importing um, sequences into other sequences in Premiere. If you have this little icon here, which is called insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips, if you have that toggled off, what happens when you try and pull this in is it doesn't collapse it into one complete sequence. It brings in, you can see the two original clips and the adjustment layer, but that is gonna mess things up. Um, you can see this is not great, this is not what we want. So what you need to do is make sure that you've got this little button here, insert and overwrite sequences, have that on so it's blue so it's activated I'm going to delete this stuff for now and then now when I pull in my sequence that I've made the transition it just sort of bakes it down into one clip basically which keeps all the properties and it keeps that transition alive let's just watch the whole little edit through If you decided you wanted to try and use a different transition, you could just copy and paste your clips uh, and then throw them into, let's say, the 360 anti-clockwise one. So you can use the same settings, pull them in there, delete those base clips, make the beginning start at the beginning, make the end at the end. Uh, and then we obviously need to go into our transition layer as well, effect controls, and then just change that back to our social four by five so everything is the right size and shape. If I just play this through now, we should get a nice different style transition where it spins 360 anti-clockwise. Looks pretty cool. And then if I go back into my demo sequence, I could grab that 360 anti-clockwise transition that I've just created, have that on a different layer, delete these sound layers as well because there's no sound coming through. Both of them are pretty good, so you've got options to play around with in the edit. 
Okay, now the next thing I need to show you how to do is to reframe your base shot. So if we come onto the second one here, you can see the boat is kind of a little bit off to the right. It doesn't look as good as it could do. I'd like it to be a bit more central. And we can totally do that because it's a 360 shot and we can do anything with it. So let's jump into that yacht transition layer here. Now what we need to do to reframe and to move our base shot around a little bit, don't touch anything in the transition layer. The transition layer is fixed. If you start moving things around, it's not gonna work with the transition. Things are gonna look bad. Instead, what we need to do is we need to apply another GoPro FX reframe frame effect on to the base clip here so if we do that things are going to mess it up initially but we just need to come down here to projection and change that to source image there we go and things should go back to how they were before now what we've got is we've got this little drop down here called source operations and this is where we can mess around with what the base image looks like so actually just by adding a little bit more on that your axis there I've been able to uh, centralize it. So when we play that through, you can see now our ship is much more centralized and it looks a lot nicer. So that's something that you might need to do um, if you need to adjust where your base clips are because you're not happy with the way that they come out after the transition. The important thing to remember is just don't touch any of the parameters on the transition layer. Leave that exactly as it is. And then maybe if I wanted to play around with how this, this first shot looks as well, I'm going to need to do the same thing. I'm going to need to drop on a GoPro FX reframe effect onto that first shot as well going to come down into the effect controls I'm going to click source image and then go into my source options and then I've got the ability to mess around with how this shot looks so work out what my sort of starting frame is it's important to say if you start messing around with the zoom um, it's not actually going to do anything on the source layer because all we're doing is just playing around with the source image and choosing what our sort of starting frame is for the shot so there we go, when we play that through, you can see we've got a slightly different angle on the first shot, and that second shot looks a little bit cooler as well now. And that was just playing around with the source settings so we can really fine tune what view we're seeing for this transition. And then the final thing that I wanted to show you um, that you can also do with this transition pack, which I think is really cool, is you can start to add more. If you wanted to add in a second transition, we can totally do that. Let's jump into our yacht transition um, composition that we've already made. Uh, I'm just gonna jump into the uh, demo footage. Let's grab demo clip one. Uh, we're just gonna drop that down into the end here as well. So now we just need to treat this in exactly the same way that we treated the other shots. We just need to make sure that when we bring this in, it's the right size for the composition uh, and there aren't any black bits around the edges. If there are black bits around the edges and it's a little bit too small, you can go uh, right click and then scale to frame size. I'm not gonna do that because this is the right size when I bring it in. Okay, and then let's work out which bit we wanna use for our shot. So I think we wanna cut in somewhere around here Right, now we need another transition for this. You can jump into one of the other transition sequences that I've created. So let's do a spin right for this one. So open up spin right, take the transition layer from that, copy and paste, command C, jump into the place where we're building our next transition. I'm gonna do exactly what I've done before. So I'm gonna place this on top with a red marker sitting on top of the point where we want the transition to happen. And then we need to make sure that we haven't got the two transition layers sitting on top of each other. So just bring it down like that. It doesn't matter where the cut point is. Just need to make sure there's a little bit of space on either side of the red markers for the transition to complete. So play that through and we've got this cool spin right for another transition added on the end. But the problem is that this is the wrong shape. Um, it's a 16 by nine shot and we actually want it to be four by five for Instagram. So I just need to go into this transition layer and the effect controls and then I need to scroll down and I just need to make sure that that is set to four by five on the transition layer. And now it's gonna come out the right size. So if I play this through, you can see we've got that first shot, flips up into this boat shot, and then now we're gonna go whoop off to the right onto this final shot like that. It looks pretty cool. I should say, um, the other thing that you might wanna adjust, uh, as we talked about before, is the zoom, but now you're gonna to have to worry about the zoom on these two different layers as well. So if we change that to 40, um, we're gonna to need to change the zoom on this layer as well. So I'll go back into the edit that I started with and you can see now this yacht transition has a little bit more because we put an extra shot in at the end of it. So I can extend that out, extend the music too, and have a watch, check out my new edit. And that's pretty much it for this demo video. Uh, it's obviously quite technical this, it's not super straightforward, but I think it will give the opportunity to create some really, really awesome effects directly in Premiere. If you've got any other questions, then feel free to drop me a comment, drop me an email, and I'll do my best to get back to you and help you out. Cool, thanks again.